Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. It's a season something episode, something I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I have it in thumbnail or on the dang on video, the video title. So y'all know it's season. This is season seven. I don't remember what episode this is, but that does not matter. Thank y'all for tuning in. Happy Monday afternoon. Okay. Um, let's get it started. It is what time? It is 2 16 in the morning. Okay. But guess what? I will not be on camera because it's late and I'm tired. Okay. But I want to get it out to y'all anyway. Now I will be live tonight. You know what I'm saying? Around between 9 and 9 30. For some Monday foolishness, okay? Some little gossip talk. We will review the looks of the Soul Train Awards. It's some other, uh, it was another event that happened as well that some of our faves had fashion from. We'll look at Mel's fashion line that fully came out that she by straight wish she could do, okay? But anyway, that will be tonight, Monday night at around between 9 and 9 30. By the time y'all see this video, I would have already posted the little um the the links so y'all are sitting on my channel okay but right now at two steps in the morning i have not put it up yet okay so i will see y'all on camera tonight okay i will not see y'all on camera right now okay but y'all know what to do for this a couple things to do first okay do not forget to do what subscribe to my channel to become a whole jaybird jaybird dot 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 and dot okay do not forget to also follow me on ig and also twitter at jamie's corner i'm saying because that's where i am that's where i post everything all the time okay y'all know to please like the video okay if you're here watching hit like also hit share share me with those who are on your social media it's nice to share sharing is caring okay y'all know the comment in the comment section because what is a conversation even if i'm not live right now y'all can still talk to me or amongst yourselves okay don't leave the comment section empty say some say something anyway okay y'all don't like comment share subscribe and all those good things there okay now the people around here who we talking about, okay, the, the, the ladies from Poe Tomac, okay? Now, look, Sharice had her first confessional. Look, can y'all believe it? I can't. I was like, really, Sharice has a confessional look? Oh, well, what is it? Well, she put on her look, and then Karen said, not so fast. Okay, so Sharice had on a little pinkish, orangish little dress. Okay, with her little wig or whatever, with her heavy, heavy, heavy eye makeup. I'm like, is her eyes open? Is she woke? Her eyes look heavy. Is I mean, like, is the is the weave on her eye and it's making her eye be closed? Are the eyelashes too heavy? Like, what the? F this is a bad makeup job. Whoever did her eye makeup, horrible. Because. Girl, it looked it looked it looked a mess. It looked a mess, okay. And I don't know why it looked a mess, but it looked a mess. And I'm like, didn't you like didn't you prepare? And I'm not trying to dog around or whatever, but I feel like when you do a confessional look, like that's a planned thing. Like they don't call you up one day. You know what? How about today? No, like it's a planned thing. If they plan for you to have a confessional, did your makeup artist say, you know what, I'm mad you said. This looks like I'm mad. I'm going to make your eyes be heavy and dark, and it make her forehead look bigger. It, it looked like somebody pulled her eyebrows and her eyeballs all the way down, and I don't know why they did that. I really don't, you know, usually with these confessional looks, the makeup artists make their eyes be all arched, the, the eyebrows be all arched and stuff, but it's like, no. But anyway, I like her hair, and the dress was cute, but Karen then said, not so fast, okay? Often imitated, never duplicated. Karen posted how she wore this exact same dress in April of 2022 on Watch What Happens Live. So what she's saying is, Bitch stole my look. What she's saying is she tried to look exactly like me. Well, I was in the pink version with blonde hair. She came on here with an orange version and black hair and heavy eyes. I was like, I mean, it do look very similar. 
It do look kind of identical. It looks like fraternal twins, okay? All I know is, Sharice, whoever did your eye makeup, you should fire them. Did you pay them? If you paid them, fire them. If you did not pay them, I now see why. Girl, but even the hair looked the same. That's the crazy part. The hair looked the same. Girl, anyway, but that's Sharice's look, y'all. Y'all like it? Put in the comment section if y'all like Sharice's hair. We're going to move on. So the episode starts off with Candace and Ashley still fussing, okay? Still at odds because Ashley has said, my friend, my friend told me, okay, that she felt like Chris was flirting with her at Karen's April spring flowers or whatever event, okay? That's what she said. So Candace is pissed. You are a vile, vindictive bitch. I was like, what is she? Okay, so at this point in time, they fuss a little bit back and forth or whatever. Candace then says how Michael go to some man house and sucks his penis. I was like, how do we get here? How do we how do we get how do we get here? Girl, look, I am so sick and look. Michael Darby is not going to be on this season at the all. I can feel it in my bones. Um, Ashley is divorcing that man. Man, forget Michael Darby. Let that man be around. Get him out of y'all. Don't like that man. He's not around. So I'm like, where did it come from? So I was like, this is just, girl. How, how do we get to someone say your husband? I know for I know that your husband be talking to this other this man and going to that man house and said, I was like, so Michael's a dick sucker. <sighs> Ask people like, oh, so we de we deflecting now? Is this where we're going? Is this what's going on? This what this what is? Well, all I know is Chris ain't sucking no dick. I say, Candace, you don't know Chris sucking dick because you acting like Ashley did. I know that Michael was so if Ashley did not know that Michael was sucking dick. How do we not know if Chris out there sucking dick too? I'm just I'm playing devil's advocate. Anybody at any time could be somewhere sucking some dick. Okay, but at this point in time, I was like, girl, what is, what is you doing? Candace says that she's been holding on to this information because someone told her that Michael was a client of, of his. So some guy told Candace Michael is a client of his, okay? And that as he wants this smoke, so poof, he is. I was like, okay, now we, you better hope that Chris ain't dick sucking too. And my thing is, doesn't matter if they dick sucking a coochie. Because my this this is my thing. This this is what I wonder. For anybody who was watching this thing, if you happen to be a part of the LGB, LGBTQI community, I feel like isn't it rude or like disrespectful to say that somebody is sucking somebody dick in a way that's supposed to be disgusting? Like, ain't that rude? Like, ain't that an insult? If somebody likes sucking dick, who cares? If ask your husband, because it's like ask is bisexual. So maybe if her husband is, okay, some people are bisexual. So I never understand it when people try to talk that insult like your man out there sucking dick. I was like, but if he bisexual and I know it, do I am I supposed to care? And if you're saying it as a dick. If you, I don't think anyone should toss it. Your husband sucked it. Girl, girl, I don't care. But I'm like, is that gay bashing? I just wonder, is it gay bashing? Okay, so, but anyway, as he says how, well, I hear things about my husband. I process I process what I hear, and then I deal with it. You don't do that. You don't hear what people are telling you is going on with your husband, okay? And Candace is because as he comes from a decrepit, disrespectful marriage, how her and Chris... They know the Lord, so they don't do that. Don't do what? So people who know the Lord don't suck dick. You suck dick, don't you? People who know our God, some of them suck dick. I know that for a fact because <laughs> I love the Lord. You hear me? Okay, so I know for a fact that people who love the Lord may participate in penis suckation. And I don't think nor the Lord exempts you from that sexual act. Because also, gay people who partake in the penis love the Lord. So loving the Lord does not mean that you cannot partake in the penis 
of the subject. I'm just saying. But anyway, everybody go to separate ways because at this point, this damn winery is ruined. Okay, it is ruined. Okay, ruined, Brian. Anyway, so we see a conversation with Abby and Wendy, who are sitting on the inside talking, okay? And Abby, like, look, I just wanted to bring this up in front of Giselle. And she's like, why? Why would you do that, Abby? Well, because Candace was saying that Giselle was only, you know, that Giselle was being phony and saying stuff for no reason. Because Candace does not believe anybody when anyone said her husband recently, over the past few months, has been a bit, um, you know, just offensive, okay, a bit, you know what I'm saying, uncouth. This making people feel uncomfortable. And Candace is not taking that in because Giselle was the first one to say something about it. And then other folks, like, when I felt, I felt, I felt, I felt. They all felt some kind of way, okay? She was like, look, Giselle saying she felt uncomfortable, okay? Mia then said she felt like Chris was staring at her. Okay, my friend is that she felt like Chris was starting with her. So how can we not act like or why can't we acknowledge that maybe, just maybe, Chris has gotten too comfortable or friendly and he just doesn't realize how it's making other people feel. This is the thing. Because y'all know folks that it's colorism because it's Giselle, because it's Anthony. It's colorism. Chris is white. He's a white man. So where's the colorism? Okay, that's part one. Part two is while I still feel like Giselle saying Chris did not physically or verbally do anything to her, it was just her feeling uncomfortable. I feel like, girl, whatever, but I can understand if she feels that way. I think if anybody wanted to just say, well, that's how it made me feel, that's fine. Periods. But I can also, now that I'm thinking about the whole thing, what Athy said, because what Athy said to me means Chris may not be doing anything intentionally. Chris could just be being Chris and being friendly as fuck, but people are not, people feel like, okay, you, you, you're a little bit too friendly. It does not mean he has any ill intent. But you should tell somebody when they're doing something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Now, if Candace does not believe them, that's her prerogative because that's her husband. She has every right to want to protect that man and not have anybody say, uh, 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 piss on his name. She has every right to want to defend her husband. However, when more than one person just says, hey, your husband is a bit, it's a bit friendly, just say, husband, stop being so fucking friendly. Leave it at that. I do feel like only because as he said, maybe Chris is just too friendly. He just and he doesn't realize it. That's that's possible. Well, I mean, that's kind of possible. Okay. Now she also wants to say, I'm not being vindictive with Ashley. Ashley. I don't know if vindictive is the right word for it, but you not, you know, you 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 like, hey, you know, what comes comes, what happens happens. So I won't say vindictive per se, but you not, you know, feeling too sorry for Candace for getting some of the the, the, the heat, you know, because of a hub. You you ain't too sorry about that now, whatever. So, but I'm not trying to be vindictive. That's inaccurate, girl. Whatever. Now, you know, her the friend. Even she said, my friend even asked me if Chris and and Candace are together because she felt like he was like Now the friend is a girl named Deborah. We seen Deborah a couple weeks ago. So production who was messy shows Chris at the bar standing right next to Deborah, and Deborah said while at the bar, I just felt like he was a bit flirty. That's also the same friend we seen in her house. You know, a couple episodes ago, okay, uh, 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 Alicia, um, Abby met her at one of her mommy and me groups, okay? I was like, girl, girl. So this is the thing. This, this is the question to ask. Is everybody tripping or has they did they all come together? So you know what? Let's get Chris. <laughs> Evil ass. Okay, I don't know. I wasn't there, but I do feel like if people came to me saying my your husband is making me feel uncomfortable, I'll say, "Oh, really? 
Okay, I'll talk to him. I will leave it at that. Because one, if I don't believe you, I'm not going to have no in-depth conversation as if I have to fully defend someone who I don't feel did anything wrong. That's how you feel? Okay, cool. I'll talk to him. And that's it. And from that moment forward, has he done anything else to make you feel weird? He hasn't. Well, then okay. Okay, okay. Now, this is the thing. The fact that production found a, the clip of Chris at the bar with Deborah, I was like, girl, because they couldn't find the thing of Chris looking at Mia, but they damn sure found the footage of Chris at the bar next to Deborah. Now, it don't show them talking. We didn't hear any conversation, but he was right there. Now, we then see Candace having a conversation with Giselle outside. I'm in the cold. It's very windy or whatever, and they're talking, okay? Because Candace said, look, the first time you talked, told me how you felt about Chris and what happened to him, Chris, I walked away. Okay, I walked away last time, but I want to fully understand what made you uncomfortable. What did he do? How do you feel, Giselle? What is it? Giselle said, look, just the fact, because she's already said Chris did not do anything. He did not touch her. He did not say anything inappropriate. So we know that. So basically nothing happened. But she said, look, it's the fact that I'm a single woman in my hotel room with a man who, do, who does not belong to me and the door's closed. Okay, I asked him to leave and he did. So that's, she said the same shit. Now, I still feel like, Giselle, Chris does not owe you an apology if you are saying he did not do anything or say anything to offend you. It's just you feeling like y'all should not have been there. So I feel like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have a right to feel like this is uncomfortable. I don't, I don't like this. Chris, maybe you should leave. And he left. But I also feel like you could have told Candace that the same way you told Robin. You Because you told Robin when it happened. You told Robin at that point in time, you know, back right after the reunion, off camera. So for you to wait to talk about this on camera is a bit suspect. It doesn't mean that how she felt didn't matter. Because the fact that she told Robin off camera, Robin said, I told her, girl, stop it. Ain't that big video? So, which means she told Robin when it happened that she felt the same way. So, it's not as if she never told anybody. And all of a sudden, she's bringing it up. The issue is you bring it up now on camera to Candace. And you could have did it the same time you talked to Robin. I'm going to leave that be. My Candace said, look, you know what? You know, uh, you know what Chris said that you was the one who suggested your room. Okay, that he then said was in the room that y'all sh should leave the door open because no one, you know, you don't want y'all, y'all don't want anyone thinking something. Okay, Giselle then say, no, I didn't invite him tomorrow. I no, I did not suggest we go to my room. Now Chris said he was about 90 something percent sure that it was Giselle who suggested her room, meaning Chris is not a hundred percent sure that he didn't say her room. But Giselle ain't, I don't think, I don't know, because Giselle can't remember him saying anything about leaving the door open. So both of them are fully remembering what either person said. So y'all both are faulty in that. Okay? Anyway, but she said, but if Chris told you that he said that the door should be left open so nobody would, would think nothing, that means he knew something about it was inappropriate. Which piss Candace up. Well, that's like you said he lured you to the room because the room because he knew the room was empty, like it was something he had ill intent. I was like, well, Giselle, that's how you said it. <laughs> that's how you said it, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And Giselle, like, look, I'd never say he lured me anywhere. I'd never use those words or whatever. It was as simple as I did not want to be in a room with a married man and Chris. And she then said how Chris could be doing things that he's okay with that the women are not. And I was like, damn. And I, I hate when Giselle say shit that makes sense. But if Giselle been planning this for months, she would have already thought about something to say that makes sense. I'm like, is she fooling me too? I don't think so. I don't think. I don't know, but I don't think. Okay. Now, Candace is pissed. You know, you know, Giselle. You waited to do this on a public platform where it could be it could do the most damage. 
okay, that you could have called me, but no, you waited until it would do the most damage. It would hurt me the most. You waited to be on TV, you bitch. I'm adding the bitch, okay? But she was crying or whatever. You are the reason. You are the reason that people could not come forward with sexual assault allegations because you say things that have no basis or no backing. And I was like, damn, Candace. Now she's stopping the Me Too movement, girl. Now I deserve like, what? I ain't been an advocate for women to be the truth because what I'm saying isn't a lie by how I felt. Now, they can't take it like two steps too far saying Giselle is the reason women, no. No, I feel like this is the sad part that I hate that my fans, not that my fans has changed because at first I was like, Chris ain't do shit. But I feel like Giselle saying how she felt is the point, not what Chris did, but how she felt just being in that situation. And I don't want to be like, girl, you didn't feel nothing because we have to get to a point to where we have to understand people feel different ways. And if somebody expressed that something you did made them feel uncomfortable, if you had no ill intent, there is nothing wrong in saying, you know what, I didn't mean to make you feel that way. I apologize. That wasn't my intent. I think that part is okay. Um, In her confessional, Candace called Giselle an evil see you next Tuesday. Who can go to hell? I was like, not a see you next Tuesday. Girl, what? And this is my thing on this. I feel like Candace does not realize she is giving Giselle the most power. Because when Giselle first came and said, Chris made me feel this way, I would have said, oh, really? What did he do? Nothing. He just, you know, I just felt uncomfortable because we were, okay, I'll talk to him. It won't happen again. It would have been that. That's it. Chris, when you, when you see Giselle next time, tell her you sorry. Because you made her feel uncomfortable. And it, that would have been it. But I feel like Candace allowing Giselle, not even, well, Candace, Candace trying to just not acknowledge or not give Giselle the power to keep this going is making it look like you don't want to accept your husband maybe did make somebody feel uncomfortable and that you're more protective of him than of what he could possibly be doing and making other people feel uncomfortable, even if his intent is not to do that. Chris could honestly feel like what he did wasn't wrong because he's cool with them. And Candace's mistake, in my opinion, after this time was like, you keep fussing about it and getting so emotional about it because it's your husband. But it's like, right, if you know he didn't do shit wrong, don't keep fighting to make it seem as if they are painting him out to be uh, ill-intented, which I know isn't the, isn't the real word, person. Because then they can't keep talking about it. Because you addressed it. Oh, he did. All right, cool. It won't happen again. Because at that point, nobody else can keep bringing shit up. I think because Candace is fussing about Giselle with it. She, you know, downplayed. When Anthony talking about he DM'd, that was stupid. But, you know, Anthony bringing up the friend thing or whatever. I think, all right, whatever. All right, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. If y'all think he being too friendly, okay, I'll talk to him and leave. But I would not get him a hold, not a piece of my aggravation to make them feel like I'm fighting against talking to my husband. I will also say to the most, fuck y'all. But I'm not going to be up here fussing and arguing and crying because, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you're giving them too much power fully. And I don't think, my thing is, I don't think Chris has done anything with any ill intent. I think it could be Chris is being too fucking friendly. And because Candace is offended, which made Chris feel like, oh, they calling me like, you know, I'm, I'm like a, a pervert. I'm a perv, And I, I don't think still me he was a pervert. And I'm not trying to 
to defend yourself. I'm trying to say how you can de-escalate an argument by not fighting the point of whatever the shit is. You can defend your husband by making sure that nobody else can say he did shit else again. That's the best way to defend your husband, to make sure he is aware of what people are saying and what he should not do going forward. Because that way, them hoes can't say shit. That would have been my talk to my husband. Hey, husband, don't you ever go anywhere with Giselle one-on-one. Why? Because that hoe is sneaky. Don't do it, okay? Don't you have no conversation with anybody else's friend. I mean, the Ashley friend, fuck them hoes. Don't do it. Because you being friendly to them comes off as you flirting. Fuck them hoes. That would have been my conversation with my husband. And to these helpers right here, all right, cool, I'll talk to them. No, don't even worry about it. Mm, no, don't even worry about it. We got it. We good. Next. And that's it. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Happy goes and talks to an attorney. Mm-hmm. The whole attorney. Okay. Now, I don't know her name. Okay, I call her attorney black woman. Okay, anyway, so the fact that Assy literally is going through separation but has not met a lawyer till now, my girl, that is insane. Look, I don't suggest anybody go through anything divorce or divorce, separation, whatever. You need to talk to a lawyer just to figure out what you should be doing. Because Assy, I'm not saying she dumb, I'm not saying she dumb. But she not legally smart. So the fact that we can see you don't know certain shit, why are you trusting Michael? You can trust that he's going to attempt to be the right person, but just follow that shit up with what? An attorney. Anybody who is going through a divorce or a separation and has not retained counsel is a fool. Not only a fool, a fucking fool. Okay, I'm be that be. Now she meets with attorney black one. Okay, as he brings up out in the beginning of their relationship, how you know I'm bisexual or whatever. So we was out here. He was an indulgent in sexual threesomes with other people because I liked it. Okay, but I had kids. I had my two kids or whatever. And I do not want to be around here fucking and sucking in threesomes as a mom. And I thought that we would both grow out of it, but that ain't what happened. Okay, he still wants to do what? Fucking suck. Okay, now you know the lady asked the lady black black lady attorney. You know, do you have a prenup? Well, we do. We've been married for eight years. For eight years, and anything he made before our marriage, we know will be his stuff. Okay, anything he's made after that will be you know marital property. Okay, and that will be up for grabs. Okay, now she also brought up how her and Michael talked about. The separation, but without lawyers. I'm like, how? Why? That does not make any sense, okay? And how he would, like, draw up some kind of agreement or a proposal uh, to make things fair. Black lawyer woman said, first of all, you have to be sure you can trust him. And not meaning she can't trust him, but you have to be sure that what he's saying is, is, is true and that what Whatever he proposes is is actually fair, okay? Because if he's the primary breadwinner, you are not in the position to even consider anything he puts in front of you because you need more information. Like, you need bank records. Like, you need to have all the info before you can agree to anything. And I'm like, right, why would you agree? Because her, I would look at it as, girl, you don't know what he has because you're not looking into shit. Is you a fool? Okay. Now she brings up how you know we have to be separated for a year. Um, how we're in the same house still, but we don't, you know, we don't come together. And how she kind of wanted to wait closer to the year being up before really getting in with the lawyers or whatever, because she's like, I'm just stalling. I mean, I want to get as close to the year before she gets messy. I'm like, it's already messy. The fact that you're saying Y'all are really not at odds. It's like it's amicable or whatever, but we don't see him like ever. He's always gone somewhere. Y'all either not really divorced or, is, or he's saying, fuck you, I'm done. Okay. So she then brings up how her and Michael were considering buying a house together. Lori said, um, <laughs> that would not be smart. <laughs> that would be stupid. Okay, do not do that. Because if he uses his money 
to buy a house for you. He can later on claim that house belongs to him and not you. He Even if the house is in your name, if he paid for it, if he gets pissed, he can claim that house to be here because he paid for it. So you should not buy a house with him. No. Girl, you should have been got an attorney. Ashley going to say, you know, talking to you versus Google and stuff is so different. She said, because I did not get my degree from Google. I was like, come on now, Black. Come, look, <laughs> the fact, look, she can't dress. Your hair laid, makeup, face beat. You hear me? Suit on. Okay, Olivia Pope around here with her portfolio in her hand. She came prepared to look like who? The Black attorney woman. Okay, I hope she hired a lady. Because she did not get her degree from Google. Okay, now we then see a little thing. Okay, little thing, little thing, little thing with Jacqueline, Sharice, and Mia meeting up. I was like, do we need this? I mean, kind of no. So, you know what? Take a second and do what? Like the video. And I'm back. Okay. Had to get some water. So me and her good friend Jack, well, I'm gonna call her Jackie and Sharice. Um, they meet up better here. I was when well, Mia said, I love Sharice, that she's just I love her vibe, okay. And like the fact that her eyelashes be sliding off her face half the time, but she don't care. I'm like, she got her girl, how they fall off? They be sliding, girl. First of all. <sighs> Sharice, girl, I'm leaving it be. Anyway, um, Sharice asked me about her health. Okay, you, you know, I'm I'm doing okay with some freaking stuff. I, I still have to get these lumps removed or whatever, but that's later. Blah, 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 blah. Now, Jackie then brings up something about, I think it was like foster care. I, I, I don't know what Jackie brought up that made them go into a conversation about Jacqueline's mom fostering Mia when Mia was a kid. And when Sharice asked, what was your mom? I'm like, bitch, you don't know. I guess not. Anyway, you know, we know that me and mom's on drugs and her father died in prison. So Jackie's mom was her foster mom for some point. So she's like, that's why me and her are like sisters. Like me and she, she said, me and me are like sisters. We fight like sisters. We make up like sisters. I'm saying that no one really knows how hard me and life was when she was, when she was growing up. And that's why her and me are so close. Um, Mia was on Walk with Apple Live today, and when she had to talk about, you know, a couple of the women and had to get like a good thing and a bad thing, um, when they asked her about Jacqueline, what did she say? I think the good thing she said was how, like, like a ride or die, or whatever, but the bad part was she bare her feelings. So I feel like it was not until Jacqueline said, We fight like sisters. I was like, they'll be back cool. To me, that means they've fallen out before over the years. This just happens to be public because me is on TV. But when someone say we fight like sisters, sisters do at times have big blow-ups, big blowouts, and would and, and would spill some tea sometime or whatever. But you weren't talking that shit when well, you was fucking Ray Ray and he wasn't doing shit. So if my man ain't shit now, Ray Ray wasn't, it'd be that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I get that. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, it is, I is. And even now knowing, you know, her mom was, was Mia's foster mom, now it makes sense why they may act like that or whatever. But I think her even saying how, you know, no one knows how hard Mia life was. I do, feel, look, some people don't like me. I feel like Mia has always probably felt like she didn't fit in. You know, because if you are a foster kid, your your parent, your mom on drugs, I, I, I do feel like it, it makes you have to fit in with whoever. And then, you know, she had those, you know, burn marks from, from being burnt when she was younger or whatever. So I do feel like Mia just needs to stop trying to fit in. If Mia stopped trying to fit in and be with the cool kids or whatever, she won't have to just come off phony. Because I like Mia, but I, I, I want to see the real Mia 
who is not trying to put on for the Joneses. And I think, she, I really feel like Mia don't feel safe enough to let her guard down with other people. I think Jacqueline knows some shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's why she may be the most relaxed around Jackie, but I don't know. I'll leave that be. Anyway, so, you know, the whole thing. Um, but Mia then tells the ladies how she's inviting everyone to Miami. We're going to Miami. Yay. Okay. And they're all excited to go. Now, we do see that the weekend they're going is Karen's birthday weekend. Karen will be turning 59. But Mia say it's fine. Karen, come, just come anywhere, Karen. I'll, it'll be special. I'll plan something or whatever. Like, come to Miami and celebrate turning 59. Okay. Um, Mia rented a six-bedroom house. Even though nine women are going, let me say this: Don't you ever invite me on a trip if I don't have my own room. If the house you got does not have a, a bedroom for everyone to have their own bed, bitch, let me know so that I can make my own accommodations. I'll still go to Miami with you, but bitch, I'm gonna have my own space. Do not invite me somewhere where I have to share a room. Or share a bathroom with somebody else, and I'm fucking 40 years old. I'm an adult. Okay. Now, but again, I rented a six bedroom house. It's gonna be nine girls going, so some folk gotta share. I'm too old to share, bitch. I have too much money to share a room. If I have to go and share room, I don't want to go. I will share room with the man I'm fucking, but that's it. But that's it. I'm not. I would not want. No. 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 Not on a vacation where, you know what I'm saying, it's supposed to be luxurious. I just want my own space. I have my own space at home. I want that when I'm somewhere. Else. Now, if it's like one day and we have to share a room for, I don't know for what reason. That maybe. But if I'm on vacation for a number of days, no, I want my own space. Period. If you cannot accommodate everybody, then get a bigger fucking house. Okay. Now, she says how, well, uh, Mia says how, you know, the people who she's not on the terms with will get the shared rooms. Okay. We'll get the, we'll get the bullshit rooms today, mainly Wendy. Okay. But she tells Sharice and Jackie. They can pick their rooms, but she lied about that, okay? Now, we do see a conversation between Eddie and Wendy. Did we need it? Kind of, no. Kind of, it's whatever. I don't mind that much or whatever, okay? Uh, they talking, okay? Now, you know, her mom had been sick and everything. I think her mom, okay, but her mom was sick. She, she feel like I need to calm down, slow down, not be so busy, not keep adding shit to my plate. I know that now, okay? Now, she brings up the whole breast my idea with Peter. Eddie say, look, you know, the breast my idea with Peter, that will be a financial investment. You know what I'm saying? I get that. However, that will put a big strain on your finance and you don't have the money. So you need to chill out. I feel like what he said was, we cannot afford to invest that amount of money. I said before, I said, I'm not saying when you Eddie don't have 20 k in the bank. I'm saying they don't have an extra Three hundred k because if they did, it wouldn't be an issue because it's an investment. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that was his way of saying the 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 uh the shit came up for me to see how much we had to spend to invest. It don't make we can't afford that. It would put a he, when he said it would put a big financial strain on the finance. I said okay, that means we don't have it. We don't have an extra. Whatever amount it is, it could be even even if the extra is a hundred thousand, whatever it is, we don't have that extra sitting around here to to just not have it in our bank account. We can't do that. Okay, so when he agrees, I'm put that idea on hold. It's on hold. But now me and all the girls are going to Miami, so we're gonna see how that happens. I'm like, girl, but I feel like they play this scene because of what happens next week between we see what Peter said. Okay, what Peter gonna say anyway. We do see Giselle and Athen and Robin meeting up because it was two and three, the three, three the horsemen. Okay, around here, around here, around here. They're out there shopping for clothes to go to Miami. And why y'all, y'all don't have no clothes, girl? The fact that we seen, um, um, 
who was it? Jill and Robin trying to clone. I'm like, the clothes are ugly. <laughs> like, how are y'all shopping and, and still getting your horrible outfit? The the look, the damn uh bikini top, Giselle, that's ugly. That don't go on your body. Damn no, don't do that. Okay. Now they discuss Chris because you know Chris is pissed about this and that and that and this because of what Candace is telling him that the girls are saying. So Chris out here tweeting, 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 tweeting. Chris said. Y'all really not ready for what's about to go down. Call me what you want, but a liar I am not. And if that's the path, I'm sorry, if that's the path you choose, I promise you will be sorry. Chris, stop threatening people. Don't do that. Don't do that. But Chris is because at this point in time, this is when stuff's going on, and you know they are recording this time. Okay, so he's been told by Candace with being said he's pissed. Okay, but Chris, not threatening people, don't do that, white man. Anyway, um, you know, but he's pissed because I'm not being inappropriate. Don't say I'm, I'm not inappropriate. Don't say that. Okay, now when Athy is there, you know, she brings Michael out of town. He just my, where is Michael? Has anyone seen Michael? How do we not know that Michael may not be up and sleeping with the fishes, with Jesus? We don't know, okay? But she said Michael was in the Bahamas. I'm not sure he's really traveling. Anyway, uh, she brings about it, had a discussion about money in the LLC. Now, the fact that she said she went and asked him if the LLC was made, and he got upset, feeling like she was insinuating that he would go behind her back and make the LLC not tell her, like he being sneaky. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Like he's being sneaky deaky. And so he was mad. I was like, is that why he went to the Bahamas? He was mad. Hey, hold on, y'all. <clears throat> Let's take a little throw. I need some water. Anyway, so she like he's upset as if she's in some way he's being sneaky dicky or whatever. So they're like, but didn't you tell us that it was already made? You tried to add an LLC during the flashback. <laughs> it's like five weeks earlier. At Karen party, she told them I found a house, I put a bid in, okay. And when Karen said, Was it solo? Was through the LLC with Michael? She said, No, it's Michael and the LLC. So she didn't verbatim say that. She just mentioned what Karen said. But Abby, you look, you look, you, you look like a liar. Okay. Anyway, but she said, Well, I assumed it was made. I thought he already did it or whatever. And so, but he hasn't. So I didn't know that until now. But I talked to my lawyer. Well, no, I'm sorry, I talked to a lawyer who said I should not even purchase a house through an LLC with him. And said, oh, so we were right. <laughs> we were right. I mean, kind of, sort of. But they then move on to the Miami trip. And now they're going to put Athy and Candace in the same room, okay? I'm not girl. After that fight, they had to get the blow up. Don't do it. So Robin said that Candace told her, because they bring up how Candace said that some man said that Michael be round and sucking dick. Okay, and Robin then say, well, Candace told me that rumor years ago, okay, that Michael was out here sucking some edit. This is the crazy part. So y'all have known all this time that allegedly her husband was out here dick sucking and no one said nothing? Not even a whole wine dick. When when they said that, they heard Michael say that he was sucking some dick and they thought, it was, they thought it was wine. How did y'all not bring up this random other person who supposedly might be dick sucking on? Okay, now Robin said that Candace said, Candace told me over the phone verbatim. So it's not like Candace said verbatim that she knows a high end private escort who says Michael is a client. I say, first of all, I also feel like a high end private escort is not telling anybody. Who their high paying clients are. That ain't high work. The point of it is for secrecy. So I feel like is it was it really a high end escort or, or a low end escort? I don't know. And I also feel like, how does Candace know escorts? <laughs> like, what the fuck, girl? Anyway. <laughs> And he was like, I don't care. I don't believe and I don't care, okay? Now, Giselle was like, look, I, in her confession, Giselle said she's never heard the rumor, 
cake. He did not know that. But if the if the dick, if she said if the, if the man looked like wine, <laughs> Giselle is messy. Giselle said if the man looked like wine, the dick gonna get sucked. I say, bitch. <laughs> Because y'all know my little wine. Girl, I cackle some tough, okay? Because she said, if the dick look like wines, he gonna suck it. I said, oh, boy, okay? And Robin said, I wouldn't put nothing past Marco Darby. Nothing. I mean, she think he may be, girl, we, we think he may be fucking, I'm sorry. Anyway, they get back to Candace's beef and Giselle, them two, whatever. And so Robin, like, it's clear that Candace is the one going to Chris Okay, and telling him what's being said, but saying it in a in a in a malicious way, as if we're being as if anyone is being malicious and what's saying, and that ain't what it is. Okay, that's not fair. Okay, and that's why Chris is on social media, popping off how Candace usually does. I was like, well, some of Chris' tweets do be sounding real Candace ish, so we don't know if it's him or her. Okay. Giselle said, look, I could have moved past it, but, you know, your husband on social media called me a liar. I can't move past it now. And I, I said that. I said, y'all giving Giselle too much power. The best way, the best way to hush Giselle's messy ass up is to not let this stuff keep going. Cut her ass off at the root. If she says this is an issue, okay, cool, I'll handle it. Like, don't keep making it be something because once she's talked to you, uh, Chris said, All right, my bad, I didn't mean it, my bad. If she keep bringing it up, then you can prove that she's trying to be messy. Because if you do, if you did not want to be messy and it was handled, you would not be bringing it up for the rest of the season. You cut all them holes off at the root, and sometimes that don't include just saying. That does not include fighting against it. It also don't mean that you give in. You just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to acknowledge your feeling and say okay, and that's it. I don't think my husband did that shit. I don't think my husband did anything wrong. But if you felt uncomfortable, okay, cool. We sorry, because we a unit. We are sorry that we made you feel that way, and that's it. And then does it okay make it seem as if you did not? Listen and keep bringing it up because bitch, I told you on day one, we, me and my husband, I started that you felt that way. We good, okay? But I mean, Debbie. So Giselle said, as of now, I will never talk to Chris. Okay, if I see him today, I will say, Chris, fuck you. I say, oh really? It's fuck Chris. Okay. Anyway, next up, all the ladies go to Miami. Well, Candace is coming, I think, later on or whatever. In car number one, okay, in car number one, we had uh, Mia, Karen, Giselle, and Jacqueline, okay? And I was like, hmm. So Jackie then says, so Mia, is this car your draft picks? Mia said, yep, my number one draft picks, absolutely. And then Jacqueline said, but what about Robin? Mia said, oh, only four people can fit in the car. So, I mean, she, I, girl, we know Robin. Robin is secondary, Rob is third round draft pick by a team who don't play. Okay. Now the off so discussed because Giselle then asked Jacqueline about how the divorce going. Jacqueline then say, Well, we were never married. I'm like, what? I could have swore it was said that you and that man was married and going through a divorce. Okay. How can you divorce somebody you never was with or never married to? Okay, so y'all just broke up, girl. Anyway, because she said we never got married. I was like, I'm confused because I could have. Are you a lie like Mia? If you lie like Mia, it's gonna bite you in the ass. Okay, now Giselle brings up how she wants to date people and she wants to date, as she said, she wants to date somebody. I want a young boy, I want to add a young boy to my group of men. I'm I'm messing with about what, what around three people. I was like, bitch, what? Somebody get Giselle line ass off my screen. Okay, now in the secondary car, we had Robin, Abby, Wendy, and Sharice. Now they trying to figure out, well, why are we in this car together? You know, what is what was the means point in putting us in this car? And then was it Robin? Yeah, Robin said maybe Karen did not want to be around you. You know, maybe Karen asked uh, Mia to not put y'all in the same car. And I'm like, shut up, Robin. 
shut up. The fact that Robin and Wendy in the same car, who they was already fussing, and Robin, to our knowledge, had not said sorry to Wendy for not inviting one of them kids to that damn fake ass uh, 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 family day. Okay, so I was like, girl, whatever. So they all so like, you know what? I wonder how many rooms. Like, how many people? It's eight of them right now. Now, once can get there. And they're all like, I hope we ain't got a shit on that room. You know, we, we need like a 10 like a ten bedroom house. Now, Sharice is fully aware that people gonna have to your room, but she ain't saying shit. Not nothing. Oh, she messy. Messy. That is what it is. Okay. Anyway, so uh we then see the house. The house looked great. Okay, the front of the house, the car right there, the back of the house, you said it's off the water. It's not on the beach. Okay, it's not on the beach, but it's off the water. Okay, it's like across the river by the riverside of South Beach or whatever. Okay, it's a chef there cooking or whatever. A good time, a good time, a good time. Okay, now, uh, Mia tells everyone they room assignments. Okay, and uh, Candace is not there yet. So the envelope with Candace's room on it is like closed and sealed and sitting like by some flowers or whatever. It's like, you know what? Don't touch that's for Candace. Don't touch it. Leave it there. Okay. So each room has a stripper name or, or a stripper phrase or or something. Okay. Some it's something about strippers. Okay. So Karen got Potomac tea. So she had her own room because it's her birthday weekend. She's the oldest or whatever from the first floor. Um so her own room, her own bathroom. Okay, now Sharice had the P Valley room, a nice little room, but no bathroom. Uh, Wendy had a, a room called Show Wives, that room also had no bathroom. But the room, the beds, and the rooms were nice, but the some of the rooms did not have bathrooms. Now, Giselle gets the Hustler suite, but she's sharing that with with Robin because they they they're bosom buddies. Now the room has a bathroom, it has a little sitting dining area, whatever. You know, <clears throat> now them complain that it, it only had one toilet and how it's one bathroom, but the one bathroom <coughs> I'm sorry, I'll still like the one <clears throat> the one bathroom had two showers and a sauna. Who cares if it was one toilet? Who cares? <coughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, y'all. Thank God for water. Now, Ashley got a room called the Player Slip, which had a bathroom in it. Jackie got a queen of dining room, which is a shared master bedroom that she's sharing with Mia. It was a, a huge suite for them, too. So... I was like, what's going on? Now, Ashley steals Candace's car. They're like, where the fuck is Candace going to sleep? Because all the rooms are taken. And there's no bed. There's no other bed there. She's like, is, is she going to sleep on the couch? Like, where is Candace going to sleep? So she sneaks Candace's car. Her and Robin look at it. Mia messy ass. <laughs> Mia's messy ass. Puts... Candace in the room with Wendy, meaning Candace and Wendy had to share a bed. I was like, bitch, you brought me on a trip to share a bed with a bitch? No, not on my watch. Not on my, girl, I was like, bitch. Now, Giselle and Robin and Ashley up here laughing, and they go put the car back. Now, Wendy's like, where's Candace's car? Where's she sleeping? Mia, where is Candace sleeping? Now, the fact that Ashley's a sneaky little devil snuck the car back while Wendy was standing around looking for it. Okay, I think Mia must have it. It must be Mia. Look at the weather. It's some. She distracted Wendy enough to hop to put the car back. I was like, this bitch here. Okay. Now when they're trying to figure out what's going on, and Mia is 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 being asked by Wendy, where's Candace sleeping? I don't. Why why do I care? Why would I care where she sleeps? She's sleeping under the roof. I was like, bitch, it was because <laughs> she knew that the room was with Wendy. But Wendy also knew that means Candace either not sleeping here or she gonna share a bed with somebody. Who the fuck is it gonna be? I want to know. So Sharice, who's upset that her room does not have a bathroom, and she said, Look, I 
on the phone, I'm trying to book a room, like Kim, Kim can have my room or whatever. I can't stay nowhere without a bathroom or whatever. I need my own bathroom or whatever. That's a non-negotiable for me, okay? So I, I sleep naked, I snore, and I just, you know, I don't care. Now, Ashley offered to share her bathroom. And Sharice said, I am not in college. I am not shit and shit. Look, Sharice may not have no point in being on here to show, but Sharice was, was right when he said, I'm not sharing the bathroom. I'm I'm used to certain things. I am not sharing the bathroom. I, look, <laughs> but again, my point would have been, tell me before I get here so I can make the combinations. Because now... She's having to figure out or find something. A co- girl, I would I would have been pissed at me. I me, mean, you ain't me. You was messy, messy. Plus, you told Sharice she could pick her room. You then gave her with no bathroom. Messy. Now, Robin then say, "Why? You know why do me and uh, Giselle always have to share rooms? It's just not fair. Who? Why? Why? It's like most of y'all at the hip." Y'all are connected all the time. So it just makes sense for y'all two to share a room. It just makes sense. Robin, old mess, at her confession, say, you know, why is it that Karen never shares a room? Because she's the oldest. Just because she's the oldest doesn't mean she can't, you know, share a room. That's not fair. Karen caught that shade. Karen, honey, Karen said, bitch, what? Karen said on Twitter, look at you hard 40-ish person and you know who you are. You should know by now that your age, shaming, and bullying tactics when applied to me only serves to lift me higher. The dimes rise and keep on winning. House flat. I said, girl, not 40 ish. No, hard 40. Girl, a hard 40 ish bitch. <laughs> Cause look, let's not be let's not be fooled. Karen looked just as good as Robin. Karen don't look 659. She doesn't. And Robin, girl, a hard kid. I go hard for you. Girl, I cackled at that shit. Because Robin said it on the show. So, you know, Karen caught it and posted it on Twitter. Okay. Anyway, so uh, the all the people say, look, girl, because y'all always close. And y'all have said before that y'all shared hotel room. So, again, it's what it is. Okay. Now, the last thing we see is Mia. On the phone calling Peter. I said, why is she calling Peter? But Peter has a restaurant or some place, bar, or whatever, in Miami. So she's like, I want to bring the ladies to your to your bar. She's like, cool, cool, no problem, whatever. I'm here in Miami, you know what I'm saying? How many, how many people is it? It's eight. It's me. It's, you know, Giselle. It's Robin. It's Wendy. He said, yeah, tell Wendy I got a problem, a problem with her. I was like, what? Why, Peter, why are you telling Mia that you had beef with Wendy? And we see the preview of them at the restaurant, and we see Mia tossing a whole full drink right into her face. I was like, bitch, you beef with Wendy over Peter? How that happen? What happened? What's going on? And that's how it goes off. I was like, bitch, y'all are messy. Mia, bitch. <laughs> Girl, we ain't gonna have a hard time at that reunion because girl, it's giving messy, messy, messy. But anyway, I'm gonna let y'all go. It's been long enough. Okay, happy, happy Monday. I will be live tonight at 9 ish p.m. for a Monday Foolish chat to come on back around here at 9 p.m. tonight. 9, 9 15, 9 30, whatever. Come on back right in me. Well, okay, now y'all know to also like the video. Comment in the comment section, share the video, follow me on IG and Twitter at Emmy's Corner, and also y'all know to subscribe to my channel. I gotta go. I love you all. A good time was had by all, but I have to go. Bye. Love you.